We're here with Nick Johnson we are here. and Mark Rakoff. Um, yeah, so this album, Remarkably Human, uh, when I listened to it, I found that it was like, it was very... Really bad? Oh, it, oh no, I thought you were going to go somewhere. You're setting me up for failure. Let me tell you, I was this one. No, <laughs> quite the opposite. No, it, was, it was very, uh, you know, I found it very cinematic. Uh, and it had a very kind of, um, like, you're trying to tell a story. Mark, you're the illustrator. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, I just kind of was wondering, I guess I'll ask you first, like, are, what, are you trying to tell a story? Are you trying to convey some sort of... Uh, imagery, visual imagery it's through your music. That's a good question. First, I have to say something very important. This is my first interview post beard. Oh yes, oh, so, right. I'm just wondering how the light, <laughs> how the light is bouncing off my my massive chin. No. Um, so I get that the word cinematic a lot. I I have a tough time with that because it's a very vague, like cinematic. What the heck? What does that actually mean? Right. Uh, I think what it means is you can imagine this movie, music in a movie. Correct. Is that something? Yeah. What you mean? Yeah. And then maybe you're saying like, is there a movie? Did you write this music for? <laughs> well, uh, not necessarily. No, like directly. I didn't. Okay. There's no, there's no imagery towards this. There was no thought in mind. I find okay. as a songwriter or an instrumental guitar player, right. um, I have. Unfortunately, I do not have the ability to write music when I want to write music. When I feel, I'm going to sit down and write a song. I don't have that. I just, that part of my brain is still, you know, it's big black hole still. Okay. What happened was, I started writing, so Atomic Mind came out in 2014. Usually, um, what happens, the first four albums, what had happened was by the time the, the record I was working on was done and released, yeah. I had written most of the next album. Because... To do it independently, there's a lot of moving parts. Right. There's a lot of just crap you have to deal with. <laughs> and which means there's a lot of downtime between things. Whether or not you're waiting for, for a drummer to finish his parts or a bass player or, or the uh, mastering engineer to send you your tracks back, whatever. Right. I had a lot of downtime. So I wrote most of Remarkably Human before Atomic Mind was even out. Okay. And the big thing that changed was just my ears. What I was hearing, right. how I was approaching harmony, what I was thinking in terms of uh, what was a conventional song structure at that point. Right. And before it was, you know, you listen to the first couple of records, it was very much surf driven, blues driven, yeah. some yeah, reggae. Sure. I mean, he did right. all of my album, album covers and I sent them demos for stuff way back and he's like, oh, this is really cool, like vintage kind of stuff. Yeah. But the big thing that changed was just my ears, was just how I was interpreting melodies and how I was thinking about composition. Right. And then I brought the piano in, which yes. immediately sets up the terms to the map, of course. Right, right. And there's, a, there's a, some of the harmony, there's a very classical mm. kind of background to it. Certain songs have this kind of thing going on. Mm -hmm. But was there a theme in mind? Absolutely not. That just happened to be the music I wrote. Mm -hmm. Also, too, I started traveling a lot more, saw more of the world, so I just had more context. Right. And I stopped caring as much about being flashy and technique right. because I realized, my friend, we were all insignificant. <laughs> no, uh, I realized like it's just it's got to be melody first, right? You know, right. Really melody first, and then uh, and actually then four albums deep you got to get a ball. Right, right. right. that in like you know there's a, there's a lot of prog albums or a lot of artists um, that you know it, there is a there is a flashiness kind of going on and what, what struck me about the album was that it was very um, it had a lot of class and a, a lot of confidence like we know that you could rip the flashiest like arpeggio you could blazing arpeggios like that's no problem for you right <laughs> But like you sort of, there's like a there's a deft touch to it, right? There's like a uh, like a like a like a lighter touch or like a more more thoughtful thing going okay. on in there. So so is 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 that right or am I off the mark or what's yeah? Uh, I, it it to you know what? It's so funny. It's never the leads and the solos and everything. Those are totally improvised. So right. what happens is it depends on it depends on how I'm feeling that day. Right. It depends like if I'm in the studio and I got a really great guitar tone and. I'm just warmed up and I'm feeling really good, chances are I'm going to play something a little bit more over the top. I was really, f okay, so there's a, uh, a song 
I was improvising. I just couldn't play something I was happy with, and I was right. so frustrated. And I just kind of was like, <laughs> I just played a bunch of notes, and it was like kind of a cool thing. Like it, it happened out of pure frustration. So it's like that kind of stuff, the fast, flashy stuff. I try to avoid as much as possible because it immediately dates you as a guitar player. You can almost hear, right. oh, in 2016, Nick was working on trying to string stick <laughs> with his middle finger hybrid picking over a minor chord with a, with a finger <laughs> set. And I don't mean to say that as like that's always the case, right. but a lot of times that's the case. Right. Um, and I try to focus more on like specific intervals. And But again, yeah. I mean, you ask me this tomorrow, there, there's a different answer. It's, it's, there's one thing I've learned about doing this professionally is, <laughs> is there's really no right or wrong answer to right. that. It's just you, whatever happens at the moment is what's going to happen. Awesome. And if you don't care as much, too, uh, about leaving this kind of... Uh, trying to be impressing your fans or trying to impress other people on the internet or whatever, right, right, right. then you just, you just think more, what does this song actually need? Like, why did I, what was the whole point of this song? What was right. the point of this solo section? Right. Is it even a solo section? Um, yeah. But a lot of it comes down to how I'm feeling that day, or what my guitar tone is, mm -hmm. or what the chord changes are. There's a song, the last song on the, on the record, Sick, Sick, Sick and Injured. Sick and Injured. Right. Yeah. That middle section, um, it's in F minor, but the chords are, uh, so it's a D flat major seven chord, then uh, B flat minor, and then it goes to F sharp, right, and then tritone substitution, and then. Um, So it's changing keys a few times, and a lot of times when that starts to happen, you have to think a little bit more. You can't just blaze the right. same patterns over and over again. Right. You have to think, what key is this in now? And if you're improvising, that's whispering in the back of your mind, like, think, think, be clever, okay, right. you're changing keys now, what are you going to play over this? Right. Um, okay. And that becomes way more important than... Right, right. <laughs> right. It just does, it just does, yeah. because that's, that's not... I don't know, I'm 30, I don't care as much about that anymore. I'm not, when I was 16, it was awesome. It really was. Exactly, and you know, that's, I think that blends itself. Crush the old man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the maturity of the I don't know if mature yeah. or just, or just a frust... What's that line from It's a Wonderful Life? Warp, frustrated old man. <laughs>
the store? How did it strike Cosmo you? Music is an absolute beast. It's the place. It is. Do you guys? The music superstore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I used to come here. The first time I came here was for a Billy Sheehan bass clinic. Two, yeah. I don't even know when that was. Ten years ago? Must have been at least ten years ago. Nine years ago. I think I was 20 or 21. And you guys had just moved here, I think. And I came with a couple of friends of mine and a, and a huge Billy Sheehan fan. And we walked in here and we were just like, holy crap, this is a music store. Um, we went upstairs, saw all the, the high-end stuff. We were yeah. completely blown away. I've, I've purchased a number of things over the years. Actually, the one thing that really stands out in my mind that I bought here was a curly Vox cable. Oh. <laughs> um, Many people bought it. Anyways, it's really cool to go from you know, a guy paying the admission to see Billy and kind of <laughs> when I got to meet him, to playing, to playing here and, and uh, putting my hands in the, the cement and putting them up on the wall. Right. It means a lot. So. Awesome. Huge, awesome. Huge fan of the store. All awesome. right. Awesome. Thanks so much for you guys for coming here and talking to me. Man, no problem. Yeah, man. Our blessed. pleasure. Our total pleasure. Nice right. job. Yeah, that, <laughs> very, good job. very good job. Very good job. And you know what I just want to say? We're always rooting for Canadian talent to go and, and rise. And Why? You've been... I'm American. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank yeah, thank you for sure. And yeah, and we wish you the best of luck. And uh, yeah, go rip an awesome show. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs>